Hello everyone. We are now in week 10. We are double digits into this semester. So um, this week we're going to close out the Victorian period and we're going to um, uh, have the Victorian era exam this week and we're going to close the Victorian era out with the age of imperialism where Great Britain conquered lands all over the world. But before we do that, I need to backtrack just a little bit. So last week, I signed on to my uh, account on Monday and was shocked to find that only nine students had turned in their weekly uh, reader response. So I gave zeros to everybody that didn't turn one in, only to find out that my email box exploded. And I was like, what in the world's going on here? It turns out that whenever I put due dates in, I pull up a calendar and I click the date on the due date that actually says that this is going to be the day that this assignment is due. Somehow I accidentally, instead of clicking on the 4th, clicked on the 11th. That was a mistake on my part. That's on me, my mistake. Um, you can expect every week to have a reading, to have a reading quiz, to have um, some kind of uh, paper or project or something like that to do, and then the discussion boards every week. So I made a mistake. That's on me. I apologize. Uh, for those of you that decided to wait until the day it was due, uh, I think you found out that you had two papers to write now because you waited until the day that the uh, week eight paper was due, the week nine paper was due on the same day. So I would not recommend waiting until Sunday to sign in. I would not recommend waiting until Sunday to do your work. Uh, if you have to because of life or whatever, I get it, but you're not going to do well in this class uh, doing all of your work on Sundays. So anyway... My apologies to those that were confused, and um, from this point forward, I will go ahead and uh, make double sure that I get those dates right. Now, what are we doing this week? The Age of Imperialism. At one point, Great Britain, under the rule of Queen Victoria, claimed dominion over one quarter or 25% of all the land in the world. Not just Europe, not just England but the entire world. They claim dominion over places on all seven continents, and yes, that includes Antarctica. And um, in many ways, the way that they conquered these lands was very violent. And the way that they conquered these lands was, um, you know, they would oppress the people that lived there. So on the one hand, you had England coming in saying, you know, we are going to conquer this land. You are now British subjects. And you had the people that were in formerly independent country saying, whoa, hold on here. What gives you the right to come here and take our country over? And what gave England that right was they had a military and a navy that was able to do exactly that. So this week, um, you know, go through the slideshow and read this week's reading, which is The Man Who Would Be King. Now, The Man Who Would Be King is written by Rudyard Kipling. If you've heard that name before in the past, it's probably because he wrote The Jungle Book which Disney then turned into a movie um, and then did a remake of that movie at some point in the future. What's important about The Man Who Would Be King is what the two characters here, Daniel and Peachy, do is they conquer a land called Kafiristan and they use similar methods to what England did on a much larger scale. So it's going to be um, kind of a mirror there. So. Pay attention to how um, Peachy and Daniel go ahead and they, uh, you know, take tribes that are warring each other. They unite them under one rule. They use um, religion as a way to unite these folks, just the way, same way that the uh, British tried to make all these countries that they conquered Christian. And um, notice how they do that because it's very similar to how England started ruling other countries, and in particular, India, which is in about the same part of the world that uh, this Kafiristan would be. So, this week, you've got your reading, The Man Who Would Be King. You've got the PowerPoint slideshow, which talks about imperialism, and then another one on, you know, uh, the reading. You've got a quiz over the readings, you know, the slideshow and the reading. Then you've got the discussion board where I ask the question, um, do you think the United States is currently an imperial power? Some people say yes, some people say no. Once you answer that question, you have to tell me why. And finally, this week is very important because we've got the 
Victorian exam. So there will be a study sheet and the exam will cover everything that we've done in the Victorian period, starting with Alfred Lord Tennyson and working our way all the way to um, Rudyard Kipling. And there will be just, it'll be just like the Romanticism exam. There'll be some general knowledge questions and then there will be some direct quotes. And uh, these direct quotes will come from your readings. They're long quotes. Uh, they, um, it should be obvious when you read the quotes where they come from based upon a key word or a key phrase or a key sentence. So uh, don't forget, read, take the reading quiz, discussion question. And this week I don't have you writing any papers or I don't have you um, uh, working on any projects, but you do have the Victorian exam. That exam is worth 15% of your grade. For those of you that keep writing me these desperate emails saying, how do I raise my grade? This week is a golden opportunity for you. Get an A on that um, Victorian exam and you'll be headed in the right direction. All right? And I, I can't guarantee it'll increase your grade by a letter grade or not, but do well on that Victorian exam. I can't stress that enough. That's how you raise your grade. So that's what we got for this week. And um, I, if you have any questions, feel free to send me emails and um, we'll talk again soon.